further ado, let's introduce our presenters today. So first we have Eric Deneau, who is an associate professor at Voorhees State University, where he teaches engineering design technology and technology and engineering education in the Department of Applied Technology. He currently serves as the National Competitive Events Coordinator for TICA, and he has been involved with ITEA as a student and working professional since 2004. And prior to his service at FHSU, he taught secondary drafting and building trades. And he and his wife have two children and they enjoy sports and the great outdoors. We also have Dr. Scott Bartholomew, who is a teacher educator with, with expertise in STEM education, teacher professional development and design assessment. He works in the technology and engineering studies department at Brigham Young, Young University, and he actively mentors graduate students and future teachers there. He's a former middle school teacher who loves ice cream, all sports, fishing, and skiing. And he and his wife have four children and love to play volleyball, ski, and travel together. Um, so as you can see on the screen, there are a few of the TICA board members on the screen here. So we have two of the board members here with us today. First, we have Daphne, who is the current TICA board president and an upperclassman at Purdue in engineering technology education with minors in global studies, design and innovation, biotechnology, biological sciences, and computer information technology. Wow. <laughs> she is actively involved in first robotics as a coach and volunteer and has served as an event coordinator for both the Technology Student Association and the Science Olympiad. At Purdue, she is also involved in student government and undergraduate research initiatives. We also have here with us today, Jacob Payne, who is a senior at Brigham Young University and he majors in technology and, and engineering studies with an emphasis in multimedia education. And he is currently serving as the TICA board reporter. Jacob has been a member of the BYU chapter of TICA for three years and has been doing videography professionally for four years. Um, so without further ado, I think that's all the TICA board members here with us today. And again, they will be available at the end of the seminar to answer any questions you have. So without further ado, let's get started. One second. <laughs> Hi, my name is Daphne Bobber, and I am the national. I enjoy Tika because I enjoy getting the opportunity to interact with people from other schools that are in the same program, but just experience the field in a different way. I also really like getting to compete against other schools and being able to have professional development opportunities that wouldn't normally be available to me if I weren't a part of ITEA or TICA. My name is Izzy Fielding, and I am this year's National TICA President-Elect, which means that next year I will assume the role of President. Being on the National TICA Board has given me so many opportunities that I wouldn't have had before, and it's allowed me to boost my resume early in my college career. My favorite part of the TICA competitions is the camaraderie that they build. They give you a chance to meet all these like-minded students from colleges across the United States. And they also fulfill that competitive need while still allowing you to make friends and connections that will last. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm a technology education major at SUNY Oswego. I'm also the vice president of TICA. Uh, to me, TICA is an organization that connects me with students who share my interest. I've been able to compete in really cool competitions. Um, Tika has also brought me new friendships and great memories. Hello, my name is Veronica and Julie, and I'm a junior at the College of New Jersey, and I am the secretary for the National ITA Student Board, and I'm also the secretary for my Tika chapter at TCNJ, um, and I'm so excited to be helping out on the board this year. Um, and my favorite thing about Tika is learning about so many different professional development opportunities and networking and meeting new people all across the country in um, the regional competition and going to the national competition. Hi, my name is Jacob Payne. I am a senior at Brigham Young University studying technology and engineering studies with an emphasis in education. 
Um, so for this year, I am the Tika National Board Reporter, and that means that I'm in charge of all of the social media aspects of Tika, as well as communicating what the National Board is doing with each of the individual chapters. Um, the reason that I love Tika is because it gives me an opportunity to collaborate and get to know students in similar fields as me from around the country. Now that we've met the team, let's talk a little bit about what TICA is. So TICA stands for the Technology Engineering Education Collegiate Association. TICA is a professional organization for pre-service engineering and technology teachers. This is, includes at an undergraduate and graduate level. So we have people who participate who are working on receiving their um, initial teaching credentials as well as people who are in graduate or even PhD programs. The goal of TIGA is to provide a platform for um, professional development for these pre-service teachers. Um, and we do that through attending conferences, um, hosting competitive events, um, and providing uh, networking opportunities and other opportunities through ITEEA for our members. What this looks like is uh, we host different regionals and at the regionals, uh, which usually occur at a conference, teams get the ability to compete against each other uh, in a variety of competitions. Additionally, there's the national competition, which is always held at the uh, yearly ITEA conference, where uh, the most schools usually come and compete against each other for the national title. While competing, students have the opportunity to uh, go to the sessions that are at these conferences, to present in the sessions at these conferences, and just meet the people that are there. So it's a great opportunity to find jobs, um, to meet uh, professors in, in different um, programs and colleges, and to just have fun and meet, meet other people. Because I will assume the role of president next year, it's my job to put together the right team. That means that national officer elections are coming up soon, and your applications are due by December 31st. There's four different positions that you can apply for. There's president-elect, which is a two-year commitment, and they get to take on the role of president in their second year. There's secretary, who is responsible for taking notes at our meetings and then sending those notes to the rest of the board. Vice president is there to assume the duties of the president in case they're ever absent. And lastly, the reporter is responsible for social media and all outreach from the Tika National Board. These positions are a great resume booster and give you the chance to travel not only to the ITEA National Conference, but also to travel to a leadership workshop with the rest of your team. This year, the National Board has done its best to represent student voices and make changes. We've worked with the national event coordinators to reframe the TICA competition, not only for this year's virtual format, but also for the years to follow. We've added student-focused presentations at the ITEA National Conference, and we've coordinated presenters to fill those slots. A lot of our focus has been on sending out surveys to gather feedback from our advisors, stakeholders, and students about changes that they wanna see. And it's also to make sure that we are making the right changes. So be on the lookout for those and make sure that your opinion is heard. Now, I will give the mic to Haley to talk about scholarships. Hi, I'm going to talk to you about some scholarship opportunities that you guys have. The ITEEA offers many different scholarship opportunities for students that they can apply for. Many of these scholarships are through the Foundation of Technology and Engineering Educators, the FTEE. The FTEE initiated its program in 1993. They award scholarships and grants to teachers and, and future teachers. This is to help strengthen um, technology and engineering educators. Some of the scholarships you could apply for include the Burke Supervision and Shared Leadership Scholarship, the FTEE Memorial Scholarship, the Undergraduate Major Scholarship, the FTEE Scholarship for Technology, and Engineering Teacher Professional Development, and the Veterans Make Great STEM Teacher Scholarship. Each scholarship has different deadlines and requirements, so make sure you check out the ITEEA website. Thanks everyone for the information. Now before we open it up for a Q&A, I just wanted to make two quick announcements. The first of which is um, we've really considered making a um, 
some important changes to the competitive events uh, in order to make sure that we are um, aligning with our goals of um, creating a professional development environment that is the most accessible um, and most productive for as many members as possible. So because of that, um, we'll be sending out a survey. Um, it should be posted on the Facebook uh, and the TIC advisor should have been emailed um, this survey. So I highly encourage everyone to take it to inform both what's going to be happening this year with the virtual events and also to you know, potentially inform what will be happening in future years as far as um, changing the uh, future event structures. So please take that. Um, you know, we want to hear what you think and um, we hope that that will help make this year, you know, as best as it can be and also future years as best as they can be. The second thing I have to say is that the technology challenge will be um, changed this year. Um, that kind of goes along with the idea that we want to make sure that the competitive events are still well aligned to our goals. And as such, we've decided to turn the technology challenge into a social event um, instead of a competitive event. We'll still be having the technology challenge, but it's just going to look different <laughs> and hopefully be um, less stressful and more about meeting new people, having fun and, um, you know, flexing your knowledge. <laughs> So with those two announcements out of the way, I just want to, you know, say thank you for watching and open it up for questions and answers. Okay, thank you, National Officer Team. They are just fantastic. Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Dunham, Associate Professor of Engineering Design Technology at Fort A. State University. I currently serve as the National Competitive Events Coordinator for Technology and Engineering Education Collegiate Association, also known as TECA. In this role, I identify competitive event authors, facilitate competitive events, organize and schedule competitive events with ITEA staff to fit within the framework of the conference, manufacture competitive event awards, and conduct an award ceremony for all nine competitive events. Before I get started with the competitive events portion of this presentation, I would first like to begin by extending my sincerest gratitude to those who make this job so enjoyable and to be quite frank, much easier. Thank you to the International Technology and Engineering Educators Association, also known as ITEA, for your continued support and promotion of our TICA organization. You have been a wonderful parent organization who has provided us with a platform to showcase our many talents and skill sets as future technology and engineering educators, and we look forward to our continued partnership. Thank you to all the advisors across this great nation who continue to provide opportunities through TICA to all the young men and women who aspire to fulfill the mission of being a technology and engineering educator. Personally, I cannot thank you enough for your continued dedication and support of the national competitive events through your efforts in authoring, facilitating, advising, mentoring, and judging. Your service to the profession does not go unnoticed, and for that you are commended. Lastly, I would like to thank the TICA National Advisor and the National Officer Team for their outstanding guidance, mentorship, leadership, and forward thinking. These are some of the best men and women that I have ever had the pleasure of working with. To all of you, I say thank you. For those of you who know me personally, understand my passion for our beloved TECA organization. There are many individuals who have made a profound impact on my career and deserve enormous amount of credit for my successes throughout my career in education. But if there was one thing that I could contribute the remainder of my success to, it would be TICA. As a student at Fort Hayes State University, I was provided an opportunity to join our local TICA chapter. The experiences gained through this organization prepared me to be successful in the technology and engineering education career. For the first time in my academic career, I was surrounded by peers who shared many of the same interests that I too was passionate about. 
We worked collaboratively on school projects, participated in department activities and functions, provided community service, fundraised for regional and national trips, traveled across the nation, competed in regional and national competitions, registered and participated in professional, regional, and national conferences, networked, presented, and continued to develop our elite resumes. This organization provided me with problem-solving skills, a strong work ethic, and the confidence to do anything that I set my mind to. As a young man who was continually reminded that he would be a garbologist riding on the back of a trash truck, I didn't need a ton of motivation. I just needed an opportunity. And Tika provided that opportunity for me. I often reflect on the current challenges before us today. I have always considered myself a fixer. It's just who we are and what we do. With challenges come adaptation and opportunity. We are resilient, strong, and passionate when it comes to the work that we do as pre-service and in-service technology and engineering educators. The proof is evident. Tika is alive and well. Throughout the years, our organization has continued to evolve to keep pace with changes in our occupation. For example, our name changed from Teca, T-E-C-A, to Tika, T-E-E-C-A, to be more inclusive of engineering and we have expanded our competitive events from a handful of competitions to currently nine. Our competitive event offerings are continually evolving and are under review to better align with the new standards for technological and engineering literacy. I encourage you to participate in the competitive events survey that I sent out to help guide our team in the crucial decision-making process of the review and consolidation of competitive events. By now, I am sure you are aware that ITEA 2021 Spring Conference, where technology, engineering, education come to life, will be hosted on a virtual platform. I am pleased to announce that all nine national competitive events will be hosted virtually in coordination with ITEA. The nine competitive events consist of communications, educational display, graphic design, trophy topper, manufacturing, problem solving, robotics, teaching lesson, a social technology challenge, and transportation. Now I'm still awaiting the results of all the competitive events and there will be a date in January that these are released to all of you. But before I move past our competitive events, I would like to talk about our new and improved technology challenge. The National Officer Team has been working on a social quiz poll that will involve individuals from a wider range of schools to participate together on the same team for a common goal bragging rights. And so I'm very excited and pleased about this new competition. There is going to be an opportunity here in the near future to participate in a trial run of this event as we go virtual with it. And I just ask that um, you help us with the facilitation of this event and that we get all the kinks worked out of it before it goes live this spring. The National Officer Team in coordination with the National Advisor have been working very hard to make the necessary changes to our competitive events. These competitive events that I speak of are currently being developed by National Advisors and the National Officer Team and are slated to be returned to me for review by December 11, 2020. The Spring 2021 National Competitive Events Release Day is scheduled for January 15, 2021. Your school will then be able to access all nine of the competitive events in preparation for nationals. As we enter new territory with the first ever virtual national competitive events, 
I expect that there will be many trials and tribulations. And I ask for you all to approach this with an open mind and an abundance of patience. I imagine there will be many things to be learned from this experience, and I look forward to reflecting on the end results. I remain positive and optimistic that this will make us stronger and a better organization for future generations to come. As we conclude this presentation today, I would like for you to take note of a couple of dates. On December 9th, our national officer team will be launching a trial run of the Technology Challenge. They are asking for full participation in this event in order to work out all the kinks and quirks of this competition before running live this spring. On December 11th, competitive event authors will return to me the guide and the challenge doc for their assigned competitive event. On January 1st, officer applications will be available. The national officer team and the national advisor would like for you to spread the word to encourage any and all active TICA members to apply to be a national officer. And January 15th will be the release date of the competitive events for the Spring 21 TICA Nationals. I would like to thank you for your time today. And if you have any questions, our team would like to answer them now. And of course, you can always reach me via email if you have questions on a later date. Time is yours. Thank you. All right, well, thank you to Eric and the TICA board for putting together that really informative presentation. Um, before we get started, just a reminder, if you have any questions about TICA, um, please stick them in the Q&A box down below and we will answer those questions in the order in which they are received. Um, so let's get started. Our first question is, um, why isn't there a direct alignment from middle school, high school, TSA to TICA? It's a great question. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure other than that um, TSA and SkillsUSA will uh, ultimately um, help those who pursue technology and engineering education as a career at their local institution um, in preparation for the competitive events that we offer. Um, I believe there are many similarities here with uh, the competitive events. Um, I want to say that um, our, our competitive events are meant to align directly with um, the STEL standards, and I, I'm not to be 100% sure as to um, how you score, how you evaluate, or what you align um, TSA or, or Skills USA events with, um, but ours are specifically aligned um, with those STEL standards. And um, it definitely will benefit those students who um, pursue higher education, um, uh, and and they will be they will be well prepared. Uh, as far as an alignment, um, I, I, I I apologize I can't answer that directly. Maybe somebody else on the panel uh, might have further insight. If I can just hop in uh, to Eric, uh, Mark, that's a great question. Uh, there actually is a pretty close alignment. If you look at the TSA, you know, TSA's got problem solving, there's transportation, there's uh, an engineering design type project. And uh, those events exist in one form or another uh, at <coughs> TICA level as well. Um, having said that, um, TICA is its own organization and TSA is its own organization. And the TICA events are under the direction of the competitive event coordinator, which is something that changes every few years. And every competitive event coordinator adds their own spin to things um, for, for better or worse, right? TSA um, as uh, you know, a national organization with um, quite a few more participants than TICA. Uh, you know, we're working, we're talking about students in one and future teachers in another obviously has uh, more uniformity across the board. Um, 
But I think one of the advantages of Tika is the fact that we have a rotating advisor role and a rotating competitive event coordinator role, which brings kind of some unique perspective to things. Eric's done a great job this year of taking everything virtual, which is its own challenge. Um, but I think all of us would agree that the, the bigger vision would be that, uh, that those students that are participating in TSA, especially the ones that are doing the TSA future teacher competition, are the ones that are then competing in the TICA competitions as well. Obviously, we're expecting a different level of rigor with uh, university students as opposed to middle school or high school. Um, but uh, because of different parent organizations, ITA being one and, and TSA being its own organization, there's also some subtle differences. Um, but I think if you compare them side by side, there's also a lot of similarities. And that that's just my opinion. Yeah, I would also say that um, I, as a TICA student member, I think that there's a lot of um, participation in TSA, even if it's not like in the competitions, like um, last year, the Purdue chapter helped uh, host the state TSA event in Indiana. I know a lot of other um, TS or other TICA groups also help with TSA at a high school and middle school level. So I, I don't want it to seem like there's absolutely no like talking or connection or anything like that. But I would say that there's no like, um, our, our competitions don't necessarily align directly necessarily with all of the TSA competitions, but there is some involvement on individual chapter levels between TSA and uh, you know, TICA students. Yeah, Daphne, you're exactly right. Um, here in the state of Kansas, we, uh, our, our TICA organization facilitates and assists with um, our TSA and our skills at uh, the state level, and we help with judging and, and those types of things. It's just something we do as service to the profession, and um, we really enjoy that. And uh, like Dr. B said, um, you know, the, the TSA and the skills competitions are, are um, you know, very vast, but they remain consistent as ours are kind of fluent and, and change. Uh, there are much fewer offerings, but um, again, um, you know, our competitive events uh, are supposed to change and, and supposed to ebb and flow with new technologies that are coming out and um, an increase in rigor is also important. So, yeah. I think another big thing is that um, kind of like what Daphne was saying with the TICA organizations, um, you know, helping out with the TSA events, like Daphne was saying in Indiana, um, that it's kind of, I guess it's kind of a subtle um, alignment between TSA and TICA. The students are kind of seeing the TICA students up there um, and kind of looking up to them as mentors almost. Um, and they'll see, oh, hey, look, these students, you know, really like what they're doing up in college. I might take a look at that once I'm that age. Um, so it's kind of just a subtle way to kind of, um, like, kind of get in there and be like, hey, you know, look at technology and engineering education. Awesome. Well, thank you. And I also see that we have popped in um, Izzy, who is the current uh, TICA board president-elect. So thank you, Izzy, for joining us on this panel as well. Um, so the next question we have is, how many colleges or universities participate in TICA? And how many student members? Um, there's a, and just an additional comment that there's a, a big student member base in TSA that could be recruited into engineering tech ed pre-service programs with an intention, and that goes back to the alignment of TSA leading into TICA. Yeah, so um, my advisor listserv that I have for contacting um, those advisors across the nation is um, at 56 strong. And of course, many of these advisors double up. So I would say between 25 and 30 chapters, not all are active, not all participate in national events. Some participate just in their regional um, and not nationals. Uh, I would say that, um, you know, I'm just thinking about 
uh, participation at nationals in the past between 100 and 150 students. You have some organizations that uh, will bring 30 um, members uh, to nationals. You have other organizations that will bring three. Uh, and it just really depends on the size of the school and the interest in technology and engineering education in your state, your location. Um, with, with that being said, you know, 60, 60 advisors and 100, 100 plus members. And uh, we, we do continually to recruit. Um, we, we don't necessarily recruit at the national level per se, uh, because those individuals who are participating in the international conference um, are already uh, currently active in, in members, but we do a lot of recruiting with our incoming freshmen and our transfer students at um, our, our local universities. And so um, that kind of changes uh, periodically. I know Fort Hayes averages um, around seven to 10 new kids each fall semester. So um, students, I should say students, sorry, <laughs> uh, young adults. But um, yeah, uh, that's about where we are right now. And um, that's, a pr that's a pretty good number. We would always like to see it grow. Um, are there any ways for um, students to build their resume and interviewing skills through collaboration and mentoring through TICA offerings? You know, I think that again happens more at a local level, um, kind of up to the advisor, uh, what they have scheduled throughout the year. Um, Fort Hayes does a lot of service work. Um, we do a lot of fundraising. We, we really focus on our community, um, but then we do a lot of networking and collaboration. Uh, we do job fairs, career fairs, those types of things. Uh, about everything that we do has an intent to build those resumes. And it's important to us that um, we continue to do that. I think for me, one of the greatest joys out of watching a student go through the program is their opportunity to attend the ITEA um, conference in the spring. Um, they get to collaborate with other peers from other universities. They get to uh, attend presentations. And um, I really um, pressure my students to uh, present at any opportunity that they can get um, so that they have a professional presentation to add to that resume and, um, and, and to participate in undergraduate research. And we do a lot of that here. And so um, all these things are geared to develop that resume. And I think really without this TECO organization, um, those opportunities wouldn't be as prevalent or um, they might be scattered out throughout the department where TECO offers one source, one location for all these events to happen and take place. And uh, these students can bounce ideas off of one another. And it, it's just a it's just a great organization for students to find alike individuals um, like themselves to um, really kind of work and hone in on their trade and craft. Yeah, and I think that you can think of all the competitions as like collaborative uh, portfolio building, right? Because each competition has a, a very real product at the end of it. Um, that you, you know, present to judges, but also like to your friends, to your family, you can put that on your LinkedIn profile, even if you want, right? Um, so I think that there's a very tangible part of TICA, which is working together in each challenge to um, create something, um, usually to solve a problem or a prompt of some kind, right? But you're always working together to, to you know, build something new, which I think is um, pretty valuable for resume building, but also for just general skill building, right? Um, I can say personally that I feel like I've gained or at least honed my skills doing TICA competitions because it requires you to work on a wide variety of um, skill sets that maybe you're not always using in your classes, like 3D printing and 3D modeling, uh, you know, even using tools in your shop uh, effectively. So I think that there's this not necessarily tangible aspect of, you know, you're not necessarily getting a certification or you know um, something like that, but there's like this aspect that you are building things with a community of like-minded people uh, that you get to be proud about and show off. 
Uh, in addition to all the benefits of, you know, if you can attend one of the conferences like ITEA or a regional conference, you have all those networking opportunities as well as presentation opportunities like Eric has talked about. I've personally presented, I've had three presentations at ITEA and I have another one this year. <laughs> um, you know, I'm a, I'm a junior, right? So like those are professional presentations that I have just because I took the initiative to say, you know, this is something I'm interested in. And it was very uh, easy for me as a student to, to say, this is something I'm interested in. Can you help me accomplish this, you know, to my professors and peers, et cetera. Exactly. And I think that one of the big things that us as the current um, TICA board right now, one of the things that we're emphasizing um, as we're kind of starting to transform some of the competitions is um, collaboration with the other universities. Cause that's something that we kind of felt was really um, lacking was it was just a bunch of different competitions, but you never really got to know the people from the other um, universities. So that's something that we've been working on a lot is figuring out ways to collaborate. So like once we're graduated, I'll have a network of um, like peers and stuff from one side of the nation to the other, just from um, collaborating at um, TICA events. That's great. It sounds like it's really prepared um, you as students for life beyond your undergraduate careers. Um, thinking about Daphne as a junior, um, not many juniors have probably experienced presenting at a conference, let alone you having done it three times. Um, and Jacob, you mentioning that it's built um, networking opportunities across the country where it's very easy for students to kind of stay within their community at their college. So it seems like it's really preparing students for skills and resume building beyond undergraduate. Um, let's, let's take on another question. Um, I have two that are kind of related. Um, so we have um, someone from Wayne State College, Nebraska. Um, Greg uh, Vanderwale, hopefully I didn't mispronounce your name. <laughs> um, he mentioned that he is looking to get back into Tika this year um, and hopefully some more face-to-face -face experiences in the future. How would we like to get rolling again? We're on holiday break and we hope to resume January 11th. And we also had another question about um, if a college is interested in, in starting a Tika chapter, what would those steps be? Hi, Greg. Welcome. Yeah, I saw your message here. Um, so it's it's quite simple for you to uh, get back on the horse. Um, what we would need to do is get your contact information, and I have that. Uh, I need to add you to the listserv so that you will be in the advisor um, communication line. Um, January 15th, I will release all nine competitive events. At that point in time, you and your student members would be able to review those nine competitive events and um, really identify which event you would like to participate in at the national level. Of course, we encourage uh, participation in all events, but we understand that that doesn't happen based on um, the size of your organization, uh, your local organization. So uh, with that being said, um, I'll get you in this direct line of communication. It's not too late to get in. Um, nobody has seen the uh, national competitions for this spring yet. They're still being developed and they will go under review over Christmas break here. So um, not too late. We'll get you get you going here. And if you have any further questions, you can you can holler at me or send me an email uh, to answer the second part of that question with how um, a college might get started with the TICA chapter. Uh, I would I would communicate with your university directly first. Um, we had to go through uh, a training process. Uh, we had to uh, make sure that we were going to have a legitimate organization, which meant we had to have um, officers, uh, president, secretary, treasurer, those types of things. We had to um, make sure that we would have a budget to uh, manage our fundraising income. Uh, we would have to show expenses and those types of things. So there are a few um, things that you might want to get started with the univer your university first. Um, once you are recognized as a legitimate TICA organization, then uh, you will be accepted into our, our national organization then. Um, 
with that being said, uh, you can you can operate with one member. You can operate with as many members as you would like and participate in in all those national competitive events. Now, based on your location um, across the nation, your um, regional or your event would happen every fall, and we would have to find one that is closest to your location and then you could compete regionally again and uh, you know for our students that's they really enjoy that competitive event piece because number one they get to travel they get to they get to see a, a lot of different states through this process and see how other schools are are handling their te programs and and um, the collaboration piece is huge for these guys so um, I'd highly encourage you to get started with that, and if I can help you out with your university in establishing that, I will. Um, I can send a formal invitation letter for you to begin a, um, a chapter, an organization. That might look better coming from Dr. Bartholomew as the national advisor. Uh, maybe we can Maybe we can work collaboratively on that and get that sent out. So if that pertains to you, let us know, and, and, and we'll gladly help. And I was just going to add that the only other step, aside from what Eric's mentioned, is each year you would affiliate as a TICA chapter with ITEA, and then that's part of the process of uh, um, being part of the national organizations and, and competitions. But yeah, happy to help help out with that uh, in any way that's needed. We could send a letter or do whatever else is needed, but it, it's not not too arduous, and it, mainly it's it's getting the student body that's interested and then coordinating everything from there. Great, thank you. Um, are there opportunities to get involved in coordinated technology and engineering service projects in our own communities through TICA activities? I think we have Daphne answer that one. Daphne, you can talk a little bit about some of the things that, that you've done. Okay, um, so at a national level, um, there's a few like service type things that we've done um last two years ago whatever however time works <laughs> I, I i went to the um, national tsa conference and i was a judge and i represented the the national board there and i also got to do like a little presentation um there as to my knowledge there are no directly coordinated outreach um uh, outreach events uh through at a national level a lot of tika chapters do their own events uh, a lot help out with TSA, like we've mentioned before. Uh, a good amount are also involved in VEX, uh, either as competitor, competitors or as like judges. A uh, good amount are also involved in FIRST Robotics, also um, in like a, a volunteer capacity. Uh, so I would say that to my knowledge, there's not any um, nationally coordinated um, outreach that chapters do, but at a local level, um, most of our chapters are involved in outreach activities. Perfect. Um, and uh, Katie in the chat mentioned that Daphne was also um, on the cover of the um, TET magazine, Technology and Engineering Teacher magazine. Um, so if you got that recently, I believe it was October, yeah, I think it was October. <laughs> Time's flying, but um, so check that out if you haven't already. Um, given the makeup of the board, it seems that Tika has a preponderance of educators and not necessarily engineers. Is there a demographic data on who participates in Tika and is growth from engineering students as participants in area of growth? Um, or is the perception on the, on the board not representative of the member makeup? I was an un undergraduate engineer and only heard of my professional engineering societies, the example of ASME, um, never TICA. Uh, so that's a great question. Uh, so TICA stands for the Technology and Engineering Education or Educators Collegiate Association. So uh, primarily geared towards aspiring teachers. Um, Having said that, uh, as Eric mentioned, uh, there was the, the name change from TECA to TEECA, and that's because uh, the content of engineering is found uh, within our domain or our field. So if you go into a standard middle school or high school, uh, the teacher that is teaching 
um, the engineering content is typically the technology and engineering teacher, previously known as the technology teacher or the tech ed. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, our main focus is on aspiring teachers. Uh, having said that, we welcome uh, anyone that, that wants to be part of the Tika community, uh, but everything we do has a teaching spin to it or a teaching flavor, if you will. All the competitions and all the events uh, typically involve uh, lesson planning or curriculum development or lesson delivery or something like that. And um, so a, a classically trained engineer may feel out of place if they're not comfortable with the teaching aspect. Uh, but having said that, we, we've had lots of people that uh, have started engineering and discovered that they, they really would like to teach and uh, this would be, be the home for them. Exactly. I think about um, kind of, sorry, Izzy. I think about Jacob, um, go ahead. kind of like how our program is set up at BYU. Um, our program is set up, it's called Technology and Engineering Studies, and we have two tracks within um, our major. We have the technical track for people who aren't necessarily um, looking at teaching as a career, and then we have the education track for those who want to be teachers. And what happens with most people that are in the teaching track, including myself, is we join the major going on the technical track, um, you know, planning to do something else other than teaching um, with our degree. And then we end up going down the um, education track, um, kind of finding education along the way through an introduction to a teaching class that we have to take um, within our major. And that's what I feel kind of leads the majority of people within BYU's program to the education side of um, technology and engineering. I think I've also found a creative role too. Um, I couldn't choose between engineering and teaching, so I did both. So I'm a double major in mechanical engineering and engineering education. So I know there's a question of representation of just engineers on the board. Um, and I mean, I think that's a fair amount of representation. We had a couple of mechanical engineers help us out with Purdue Tika, um, just we kind of pulled them in for the national competition to have them help out with some of the challenge. And I think that they're going to return. So I think pushing it into, you know, expanding the boundaries beyond engineering education could be a good opportunity just to get a more well-rounded group of individuals. And then some, uh, someone in the uh, Q&A box wrote that they'd echo that in Kentucky, they have over 20 um, um, engineers who have transitioned to high school engineering tech ed as well. So that sounds very similar. Um, and they're degreed engineers. Um, let's see, a few more questions. We have about 10 minutes left. Um, are there any traditional um, Contest welding, small engines, cabinet making, et cetera, being considered for TICA events. So outside of our nine competitive event categories, um, we don't do too many, um, oh, how should I say this, physical activities on site. Um, something that would probably be as closely related to what um, you're referring to in the welding arena would be our live manufacturing event where students um, create a product through the manufacturing process and the, the product carries, the final product carries some weight, the manufacturing process uh, carries some weight, um, the overall design um, from start to finish. So there are a lot of things that we we do, but um, we try to encompass in our competitive events um, the projects that might be taught at the high school level. And I know like an ag mechanics or a welding is taught at the high school level, but um, we're always in an, an event or in an arena and um, we're, we're limited a little as to um, what we're allowed to do inside of these venues. And so uh, welding would be one of those that would be pretty difficult to um, maintain. I wouldn't say that it would be out of the question, but um, again, we, we try to align these competitive events directly to our STEL standards for educators who are teaching technology and engineering education. So a lot of what, you know, the welding competitions you're referring to 
are, are being done in TSA and skills and um, those courses are being taught and we're preparing our students at the collegiate level to teach some of those courses, but um, unfortunately that is not one that is a competitive event. I can imagine that would be difficult at a virtual uh, conference as well. <laughs> um, a suggestion was uh, maybe to adopt the ITEA REACH Challenge as a type of national service project. Um, so I think that's a great suggestion. Yeah, and, and to echo what Steve's saying there, um, he reached out to me, uh, it's been a couple months ago, and, and I forwarded the REACH Challenge out to all of our national advisors and, and sought interest in this. And I think in its infancy, it didn't get a lot of traction. I also think that the fact that we're virtual, we lost some interest there as well. But um, I do believe that that's something at the national level that uh, I know that our Fort Hays State students will uh, be willing to participate in. And I'm sure there's other um, chapters across the nation that will do so as well. So excellent idea and we'll continue to pursue that. Um, are the competitive events typically a team or an individual basis? Um, I'm in the teaching track faculty at the University of Maryland and we'll be interested in learning more if UMD or Greater College Park doesn't have an existing chapter. We are starting a new course in our engineering college open to all students that I will be teaching in the spring. And this might be a good avenue for me to pursue that with these students. Yeah, so I think the competitive events are designed to be uh, collaborative, to have multiple individuals working as a team for one common goal. Um, with that being said, each one of the competitive events uh, requires certain individuals to participate. So. Um, like problem solving, you may have up to four individuals participate on that event. Um, robotics up to five and in this particular instance where we've had uh, a lot of interest in larger um, organizations at local levels we've allowed multiple teams to participate in the same event from from the same school uh, and then like live manufacturing we have six individuals that work on that and um, I just I want to mention and and really um, give kudos to our students because um, these competitive events are, are, are not small events. I mean, these students will put in excess of 100 hours in preparation um, to compete in these national competitive events. I'm speaking for really Fort Hayes, but I, I know that there are other institutions that have work nights, one or two nights a week. Um, it's outside of the normal um, class room time um, and, and it gives them an opportunity to work together in preparation for these events and uh, and I'm not kidding you when I live manufacturing takes two to three hundred hours to uh, get it right and to perform at a high level and so um, there is a, a great deal of commitment by these these um, young students who are who are working uh, to become national champions so that they can add that to their resume, uh, which looks phenomenal. Um, and so that's, that's something that um, depends on the competition. So um, I will add this one little piece and kind of a plug for Tekka. Um, I have not done an interview up to this point where that has not driven the topic for conversation. Uh, that's something that uh, most people who I've experienced uh, with interviews have asked me about. I know students come back and say that was the number one question that they had for me, explain Tekka and what this is and, and, uh, and your accomplishments here because it, it's, it's vast and it's, it's amazing. So um, they, are, they are excellent competitive events. Something I will mention um, as far as Tika as a class is a I think Dr. B, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that um, some chapters do do like TICA competitions as part of classes. Um, I know at Purdue, we do that as an option sometimes, depending how things work out. Um, so I think that had doing, um, you know, TICA competitions as class projects is something that's fairly accomplishable and could work well, depending on how your class is set up and how many people are in it uh, and stuff like that. Um, and I would also mention that like, um, 
individuals can work on a, you know, work on a, a single challenge, but I say teams are usually more successful. <laughs> And is there any way for, say, new um, members and chapters to kind of prepare for the competitive events at all? Um, are there any resources available for that or any advice you have to prepare new members? I think my personal recommendation would be just to jump in and get involved and go to your regional um, attend it first one time as a student member, attend the presentations, see what they're doing for regionals. Most of the regionals that are held align directly with the competitive events at the national level. And so that's going to give you some insight um, into what those national competitive events look like. But um, everybody's kind of in the dark until after the first of the year on the national competitive events. We like to keep it that way so that we have a fair and even playing field. Um, and so that's up to the national authors of those events to really put those together and, and publish those events in the spring. But um, yeah, I would say just dive in and um, go to your regional if you have one. And, and that's really the best way to uh, prepare for our competitive events. Um, great. As a so, side note, if you want to prepare for our national events next week, <laughs> is the, the, the social for all TICA students. So the link will be sent out either tonight or to tomorrow, depending on when I <laughs> get to writing the email. But um, we'll be, she should be fun. We'll test out our new um, kind of idea for how the technology challenge is going to run. Um, there'll also be other options. We're planning on having a Minecraft server open. Ooh, cool. Uh, and as well as Among Us and Jackbox, potentially, depending on how many people show up. So please come, try it out. And if you don't like it, then you can tell us before it's the official national event. <laughs> um, well, thank you, everyone. If there are no other questions, I'm seeing a lot of comments in the chat about um, Purdue and uh, Brigham Young uh, football. <laughs> Um, and also a mention of recommending a new Disney Plus show called Shop Class, so another resource to check out. Um, as um, Eric mentioned, Tika used to be called Tekka. Um, when I went to TCNJ many years ago, Dr. Karsnitz um, had Tekka there, and um, students who were a part of that then still talk about it today and still share pictures of regional everyone talked about the Virginia Beach trip um, and it's nice to see that uh, Tekka has progressed into Tika and adopting the style stand new style standards and now adapting to a virtual format with even modern video games and Minecraft and everything going on today. Um, so it's definitely evolved a lot over the years and it seems to be very current with the current times which is great. So um, don't see any other questions. Um, so and we're right, right at the dot uh, with the time. <laughs> um, so thank you everyone for um, joining us today and thank you to the Tika board and um, Eric and Dr. Bartholomew for um, answering all of these questions and putting together that presentation for us. Yeah, just one final plug. Um, if your organizations would complete the survey, uh, that I sent out to help direct and drive conversation for changes coming to the competitive events. Uh, that would be excellent. We're sitting at 49 participants. Uh, I'd like to get up to about 100, which would be, I believe, more than a majority, and that would allow us to make some good decisions moving forward. So I would say half of the 49 people who have filled out the survey are from Florida State University. So we, we need to get some others involved. So I'd appreciate if they would get those um, filled out and sent in just as soon as possible. Thanks for that reminder. <laughs> yeah. um, if there are no other final notes or questions,